Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is like a different background. Should I pause my dishwasher? I just paused my dishwasher, that's how dedicated I am to make this video. Hey guys, if you're new to my channel, my name is Piper and I am a first year medical student. I'm almost done with the year, so it's like, Literally this weekend, I realized that the 2024-2025 AMCAS application was gonna open soon. And so I was like, hmm, I'm sure there's a lot of people who are gearing up to applying to medical school for this upcoming cycle. So I wanted to do just a little video on basically like a step-by-step -step guide on how to apply to medical school. Um, I definitely was in your shoes like two years ago. And honestly, if you're watching this video, you already have a better head start than I did. I didn't even know that the AMCAS opened up on May 1st. I said this in previous videos, but I went to the University of Georgia undergrad and I really felt like I didn't know anything about applying to medical school. And it's definitely a daunting experience and I was just on Reddit and student doctor the whole time. So if you guys are interested on learning what the whole medical school application process is like and how to apply to medical school, make sure you keep on watching and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe. I have like 10 steps slash like tricks slash advice for applying to medical school this year. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get straight into it. So one of the first things that you wanna do if you are applying to medical school, this is definitely an obvious one, but you have to take the MCAT and the medical college admissions test, I believe that's what the MCAT stands for. I would recommend that you take your MCAT pretty early on, probably like six to eight months before you even start applying. Um, I, I do have have a couple of different videos up about my studying process but obviously just the given is the MCAT and just briefly I would definitely recommend a lot of people self-study for the MCAT I talked about me self-studying in my previous videos but then I also realized that I needed a prep course there's nothing wrong with getting a prep course I used blueprint I really like blueprint you might want to start studying and taking it a little longer if you know that you're not the best at standardized testing in case that you want to make your MCAT a second second or third time. The MCAT is definitely important. I wouldn't say it's like the most determining factor for getting into medical school because I do think schools are starting to look at applicants more holistically. But honestly, like you do need a good MCAT score to get into medical school. So take your MCAT. So the second step for applying to medical school is you're gonna have to create your AMCAS account. I'm gonna put like the website here. You'll probably already have one if you've um, registered for the MCAT. Basically the AMCAS is the portal for medical school applicants and that's where you're going to be like submitting your um, primary application and your letter of recommendations your school list and everything i would get pretty comfortable with amcas and like navigating it oh just very briefly too so the amcas is primarily primary application the way that applying to medical school works is that you have a primary application which is your amcas i think your primary is really just as important as your secondary so you do your primary application on the AMCAS. And so the AMCAS will send out your primary application to all the schools that you wanted to go to. So then schools from there, they can look at your primary, they can decide if they want to send a secondary application. Secondary applications are more, it's more tailored to the school and their program. And so after you submit your secondary applications, then you may get an interview. Then if you get an interview, then you may have get an acceptance. So it's kind of like a long and waiting game kind of process, but that's how it works. The next step that you want to have done for submitting your application, and I would say, I would recommend that you do this too before um, May 1st or whenever the application opens. I don't know if it always opens May 1st, but before the primary opens, I would say definitely have a working personal statement. So your personal statement is basically like your story. It's you explaining who you are as a person outside of things that the application committee will see like your grades and stuff, your extracurriculars. It gives them um, a solid foundation on who you are as a person, what kind of physician and doctor you aspire to be. You could perhaps talk about what has inspired you to go into medicine, but a personal statement is a lot harder than it sounds. And so my number one advice for you, like once you reach this step, is to utilize your school resources. 
I definitely went to my career center at UGA and they helped me so much with drafting my personal statement. However, it takes so long to craft a personal statement. So I would definitely say don't underestimate the time that it would take to write a good personal statement. Whether or not you've always been a good writer, whatever, a personal statement can be very, you know, detrimental um, to if a school will give you an interview and if they will like you, if you could actually offer something to the school. So definitely take the time to write your personal statement you want it to be unique to you and unique to your story of medicine so definitely utilize your school resources um, most schools have a career center just for those kind of stuff and I would just say really utilize that so the next step to applying to medical school is you're going to need letter of recommendations that there's just no way to get past it and I know it can be very daunting and intimidating to ask professors for a letter of rec if you know you didn't really go to their office hours or that wasn't the class that you really liked or you know you just weren't in class a lot um, but you're gonna need letter of rec and I would definitely recommend that you start thinking and start thinking about who is gonna write your letter of recommendations before that time comes now granted you can submit your primary application without letter of recommendations they're typically required I think like I honestly can't remember your letter you I know you can submit your primary without your letter of Rex but if you don't have your letter of Rex in time it may hinder the um, time it takes for you to either get a secondary or an interview so my advice to you guys is I would go ahead and start looking at some medical schools that you're interested in so they should tell you the requirements for letter of Rex because nine times out of ten you can't just choose whatever professor I know that a lot of schools that I apply to of Rex had to be from a bio or a chem professor or bio biochem professor um, one had to be from community service x y and z so really go back and look at those requirements and start thinking when you're going to ask and how you're going to ask those professors to get those letters done um, i honestly think the sooner the better like i said it's just something to kind of check off and not worry too much and plus you don't want to wait till the summer or when it gets close to graduation because most people they might be starting that post-grad or um, whatever phase you're in it might be really hard for the professors to get your letter of recs in time because you also want them to you know have time to draft a really good letter for you and whenever I ask for my letter of recommendation I always go ahead and volunteer to send my resume and my CV from the get-go it's a professor that you may not have had a close up a relationship for definitely offer a chance to discuss on zoom to get to know each other on zoom or whatever I had to do that I needed a letter of rec from like my genetics professor so I had to meet with him on zoom and we talked for about an hour told him about myself gave him my CV and resume and he wrote me a letter but so definitely just start doing that now than later because it's just gonna be a stress and if you wait too late on break professors might be on late break and you need your letters so yeah the next step that I would say if you're gearing up for applying to medical school is to go ahead and start organizing your extracurriculars I'm going to drop a picture on like what I mean I typically excel sheet created I still do this and I am in medical school just to keep track of everything that I'm doing so I think it works really well to have um, to organize all of your extracurriculars in chronological order and have like the title of what you did the hours that you had contact information just in case you need to go back and ask for a letter location or whatever and just a short little description and this helped me so much on my application process because I created this table before applying to medical school and I was just keeping track with it and it just helped so much everything was organized if I knew that I needed a letter from someone I had the email already um, for AMCAS application you're gonna have like an extracurricular section I was able to kind of just put what I already had in my table tweak it a little bit so it didn't take me that much time and I see like life goes by really fast I don't know about you guys but I'd be a busy girl so I can't always remember what I did like six months back and how long I did something for and who was the contact person so just having it in a table makes it really nice and it's gonna be very beneficial for you when it comes in time of writing your application my next tip is to take your time it takes time to craft a perfect application I understand that you know you may hear that there's like a deadline like you should turn everything in by like June or July look y'all I got into three schools and I submitted my primary like in late June I took my MCAT in July I was still able to submit my secondaries by 
August. So I would really say have everything, have your primary probably submitted by late July, the latest. Obviously the earlier the better. However, you don't wanna rush yourself so much that you're not giving yourself enough time to craft a perfect application because honestly, you probably only wanna do this once. Applying to medical school is so expensive and it's so exhausting. You probably don't wanna do it again and taking your time and not rushing the process is gonna be very beneficial for you in the long run. And so with that, I would say don't compare yourself to other people. Don't compare yourself on Reddit or Student Doctor Network because I know y'all are probably doing it. Everyone is on a different timeline. So my next, ask someone to review your application. I think that is a great way to catch mistakes and just to get feedback on what you're writing, you know, making sure you're not redundant and everything is flowing and makes sense. I wouldn't ask your parents. I would once again utilize some school resources, so like your career office center, advisor, or even someone who has applied to medical school to see if they can go over it. I went over um, someone that I know from UGA's application earlier this year, and I would reach out to people to review it. It's nice to have a second set of eyes on an application just to get that feedback and to go through some stuff, make sure everything is good. Next, don't be redundant. And what I mean by this is don't put things that you talked in your personal statement on your primary application. So for example, in my personal statement, I think I mentioned how I worked as a phlebotomist and you know, Athens and the type of people that I saw there, but I didn't mention that in my primary application. Like I didn't list that in my um, extracurriculars and activities because I didn't want to be redundant. And I know that can be hard and difficult Difficult. I would just really think of how you can tie in what you've done in your personal statement and keep it separate from your primary application because you want to make it seem like you're a well-rounded person and that you have a lot to talk about and to discuss. So if you mention how you volunteered at the hospital in your personal statement and then you mention it again in your primary application, you're just being redundant and not giving the um, committee enough time to really grasp as to who you are as a person and how these activities shaped your um, outlook on medicine and your passions towards medicine so don't be redundant my um career counselor whoever i was visiting at uga reviewing my app he taught me that and i think like it was the greatest advice next i would say submit when you are ready obviously i kind of talked about this my battery's gonna die so i'm sorry if i'm talking fast now obviously i kind of talked about this but you want to take your time with your application like i said we kind of discussed the timeline a little bit but once again just submit when you're ready if you really feel like you've rushed your personal statement your primary application until next year until next year because you're gonna waste so much money on your secondary apps and your primary apps and you BS your application. Um, so submit when you are ready. When I submitted my application, I went through it so many times. I was like, okay, this is what I want the people to see. Like I did my best on it, I'm ready, submit. Lastly, my last advice, your last step for applying to medical school. This is so important, you guys. Research your schools, research your schools, research your schools, research your schools, okay? I did not do this and I wasted so much money applying to schools because I was like, mm, I'm gonna go here, this could be fun, I wanna go here. And they didn't even accept out-of-state students. So they really took like my $200 just to send me a rejection letter, okay? Your schools, um, I really didn't know this until I started looking into applying to medical schools. But a lot of schools have cutoff or secondaries. And these cutoffs could be based on your MCAT score, based on your GPA, based on your residency. Um, some schools won't give you a secondary if you like didn't have a 505 on your MCAT. Some schools cut off with a 510 on the MCAT. If you're just aimlessly applying to schools without looking at the requirements, you're gonna be wasting a lot of money. Um, and some schools don't accept out-of-state students. And so once again, I was like, yeah, school in New Orleans could be really fun. Y'all, they not gonna accept me. I have no ties to New Orleans. I don't live in New Orleans. I'm telling you, applying to medical school is expensive. I did not qualify for the waiver so do your dual do your due diligence do your due diligence and research these schools okay okay guys and that was the end of like my step-by-step -step guide on applying to medical school like i said i have a ton of other videos that talks a little bit more in depth about my application and my process specifically so you guys can definitely check that out on my channel i hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful and please let me know if there's any questions or comments down below for what you guys um any questions or comments down below that you guys might have about applying to medical school and let me know what other videos that you guys want to see hopefully you guys like this background and it was more of like a casual kind of like 
bestie kind of feel talking i don't know but i will see you guys next time and thank you so much for watching